Based on the evidence, 97 out of 100 climate scientists agree that humans are causing global warming. Despite this overwhelming scientific consensus, based on many lines of evidence, a small percentage of the population disagrees with the scientists and denies the science. Science denial has five telltale techniques. The first technique of denial is fake experts, people who convey the appearance of expertise without possessing relevant expertise. The Global Warming Petition Project lists 31,000 science graduates disagreeing with human-caused global warming, but 99.9% .9 of the people in the petition have no expertise in climate research. That's fake experts in bulk. The second technique of denial is logical fallacies, such as straw man arguments and red herrings. A red herring is a distraction that has nothing to do with the conclusion. For example, arguing that carbon dioxide takes up a small percentage of the atmosphere so it can't have a strong effect. But we all know examples in everyday life where a tiny amount has a strong effect. Take blood alcohol, for example. The third technique is impossible expectations, like arguing that global warming doesn't exist because it's cold. Cold weather doesn't disappear during global warming, it's just less likely. This argument also commits the fallacy of cherry picking, the fourth technique of denial. It focuses on select bits of information while denying any science you disagree with. How do you tell the difference between misleading cherry picking and appropriate examples? Someone is cherry picking when the conclusion from a small selection of the available data conflicts with the conclusion from the full body of evidence. The last technique is conspiracy theories. The idea that all the world's scientists are in on a global plot. The problem is you can't change the mind of a conspiracy theorist. Show them evidence to disprove their conspiracy and they'll say the evidence was part of the conspiracy. Facts bounce off their tinfoil hat. That's the five techniques of denial. Fake experts, logical fallacies, impossible expectations, cherry picking and conspiracy theories. Knowing these techniques is the first step to building resilience against misinformation and giving science denial the flick. Scientists measure heat building up in the oceans, warming the land, warming the air, and melting ice. They've observed that our planet is building up heat at a rate of at least four atomic bombs per second. If you were a cranky uncle wanting to deny the reality of global warming, how do you get around this astounding build up in heat? Through the technique of cherry picking, focusing on small pieces of data while ignoring the rest of the evidence. Climate deniers argue that surface temperature warming has stopped over a short period, like the last decade or so. How can the surface stop warming if the planet is still building up heat? While the total amount of heat in our climate system steadily builds up, the surface temperature jumps up and down from year to year. This is because heat is constantly sloshing between the ocean and the atmosphere, driven by ocean cycles like El Nino, which is Spanish for the little boy. El Nino sloshes the heat around between the ocean and the atmosphere, causing the surface temperature to jump up and down from year to year. This means a cranky uncle can cherry pick short periods during long term warming when it looks like warming has paused. This is like being at the bow of a sinking ship and arguing that the ship can't be sinking because you're moving upwards. It's cherry picking from the available evidence while failing to look at the big picture. So to summarize, the key climate fact is that over the past few decades, our planet has been building up heat at a rate of at least four atomic bombs per second. The myth is that global warming stopped over the last decade or so. This myth commits the fallacy of cherry picking. It looks at short time periods while ignoring the long term warming trend. It also focuses on surface temperature while ignoring all the evidence telling us the planet continues to build up heat. Global warming means more hot weather and less cold weather. Across the United States, the proportion of hot record temperatures has been increasing. In the previous decade, there were twice as many hot records as cold ones. But every time it gets cold, you hear a cranky uncle ask, what happened to global warming? This commits the fallacy of impossible expectations. Global warming doesn't mean we'll never see cold days. It means hot days are more likely and cold days are less likely. The cold weather argument also commits the anecdote fallacy, a form of cherry picking. It focuses on your personal experience while ignoring what's happening to the whole planet. It's like arguing that at night time, the sun doesn't exist. 
Not falling for this myth is like object permanence, but for adults. So to repeat, the climate fact is that global warming has made hot days more likely and cold days less likely. The myth is that cold weather proves global warming isn't happening. The fallacy is impossible expectations. Global warming doesn't mean cold days never happen, just that they're less likely. This myth also commits the anecdote fallacy. It focuses on personal experience while ignoring the bigger picture. Sea levels are rising. One reason is because oceans are warming, and warmer water takes up more space than colder water. Another contributor is ice sheets that are losing hundreds of billions of tons of ice every year. The rise is so steady that it's difficult for cranky uncles to deny sea level rise. This hasn't stopped them from trying though. They'll cherry pick very short periods where sea level rise temporarily pauses to cast doubt on the long term rise. In fact, sea level rise is so difficult to ignore that an alternative cranky response is to argue that sea level rise isn't accelerating. Rather than deny it's happening, they move the goalposts by denying the rise is getting faster over time. In summary, the key fact here is that sea levels have been rising steadily over the past century. The myth is that sea level rise is exaggerated. The fallacy is cherry picking, focusing on short periods where the sea levels stay flat while ignoring the long term rise. Another fallacy downplaying sea level rise is moving the goalposts, shifting attention to whether it's accelerating or not. Over the last few decades, the sun has been cooling slightly. What if it keeps cooling? The sun has been cooler before. In the 1600s, the sun went through a period of low activity at the same time as the Little Ice Age. Here is how global temperatures will increase from our greenhouse gas emissions if the sun stays the same. But could a cooling sun be our get out of jail free card? Well, here is future global warming if the sun's output fell to those low levels from the 1600s. The drop in sunlight would only offset about one decade's worth of global warming. Compared with greenhouse warming, the sun is a minor factor. When people argue we're heading into an ice age, this misrepresents how much the sun affects climate change. Greenhouse warming is the main driver of modern climate change. The sun is not our get out of jail free card. Once again, the climate fact is that even if solar activity dropped, it would only slightly delay global warming from our greenhouse gas emissions. The myth is that we're headed into an ice age due to a cooling sun. This commits the fallacy of misrepresentation, overstating the role of solar activity, which has a minimal effect on climate change compared to greenhouse warming. In 1958, Charles Keeling began measuring atmospheric carbon dioxide, or CO2. He observed that CO2 was rising and falling from year to year. This annual cycle is due to factors like CO2 moving between the atmosphere and vegetation. In spring, plants absorb CO2 out of the air and convert it into foliage. In autumn, the leaves fall and rot, emitting CO2 back into the atmosphere. Keeling also found that over time, the amount of CO2 in the air was increasing. This graph became known as the Keeling curve. It told us that big changes were happening to our atmosphere. For thousands of years, atmospheric CO2 levels remained relatively steady. Nature was in balance, with natural emissions matching natural absorptions. Humans upset the balance during the Industrial Revolution, when we began burning fossil fuels. We took carbon that was trapped underground as coal, oil or gas, and burnt it, sending large amounts of CO2 into the air. Now, atmospheric CO2 has increased to levels not seen in millions of years. Cranky uncles try to minimise our role in disrupting the climate system through a crafty piece of cherry picking. They argue that human emissions are small compared to natural emissions. Humans are emitting around 33 billion tonnes of carbon into the air every year, while nature is emitting around 730 billion tonnes of carbon. However, nature also absorbs around 740 billion tonnes of carbon each year. By failing to consider the full picture, this cherry pick ignores that nature was in balance and we upset the natural balance. To summarise, the climate fact is that nature was in balance with natural CO2 emissions matched by natural absorptions. We upset that balance. The myth is that human CO2 emissions are tiny 
compared to natural CO2 emissions, so we don't matter. This commits the fallacy of cherry picking, ignoring how natural absorptions match natural emissions. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that traps heat. We can understand the greenhouse effect in three easy steps. First, greenhouse gases allow visible light, sunlight, to travel freely to the Earth's surface. Second, the Earth is warmed by sunlight and glows with infrared heat. Third, this infrared heat radiates from the Earth's surface, but greenhouse gases trap the heat, stopping it from escaping to space. This is how the greenhouse effect warms the Earth. It lets sunlight in, then traps heat on the way out. The warming effect of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide has been confirmed by many lines of evidence. Aircraft and satellites measure less heat escaping to space at the exact wavelengths that carbon dioxide absorbs energy. The greenhouse effect is a measured fact. Nevertheless, cranky uncles reject even basic physics like the greenhouse effect. One cranky argument is that carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a small percentage, 0.04% of the atmosphere, so it can't have a significant effect. This is a red herring, an irrelevant point designed to distract. We all know from everyday life that small amounts of an active substance can have a strong effect, whether it be a drop of arsenic in a glass of water, or a fraction of a percent of alcohol in our bloodstream. Once again, the fact is that the greenhouse effect is an observed, well, fact. The myth is that carbon dioxide cannot have a strong effect because it's a trace gas. The fallacy is red herring. The fact that carbon dioxide is a trace gas is irrelevant as we know small amounts of an active substance can have a strong effect. Throughout Earth's history, there have been periods when climate changed dramatically. Over the last half million years, our planet has transitioned from ice ages to warm periods, then back again. This dramatic ice age cycle was caused by subtle changes in the Earth's orbit. The past sends us a clear message. Our climate is highly sensitive to small changes in heat. The slightest nudge causes a strong reaction. Another way to look at it, our climate system is like a cranky beast which overreacts to even small prods. Right now, we're hitting it with a big stick. The cranky uncles take entirely the wrong message from the past. They argue that climate is changing naturally now because climate changed naturally in the past. This argument commits single cause fallacy, assuming something only has a single cause when there might be multiple factors. It's like arguing that murders don't happen now because people have died of natural causes in the past. In summary, the fact here is that the past warns us that climate will react strongly to all the heat-trapping greenhouse gases we're adding to the atmosphere. The myth is that climate has changed naturally in the past, so current climate change must be natural too. This myth commits single cause fallacy. Just because natural factors have driven climate change in the past, doesn't mean it's necessarily natural now. When we burn fossil fuels, we release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a heat-trapping gas and causes warming. But when it gets warmer, the oceans release CO2. This is because warmer water can't hold as much dissolved CO2. This results in more CO2 in the air, which results in more heat being trapped and more warming. So more CO2 causes warming, and warming causes more CO2, a reinforcing feedback. In the past when the Earth warmed due to factors like wobbles in the Earth's orbit, this caused the oceans to release more CO2. The extra CO2 in the atmosphere added even more warming. This reinforcing feedback was strong enough to pull the Earth out of ice ages. Over the last half million years, climate and CO2 marched together in lockstep. But cranky uncles look at past climate change and come to the wrong conclusion. They argue that in the past, CO2 rose after warming Therefore, CO2 can't cause warming. This commits the logical fallacy known as false choice, otherwise known as false dichotomy. A false choice is where you have to choose only one of two options, when both options could be correct, or there could be other options. 
In the case of CO2 and climate, we know that more CO2 causes warming, and warming causes more CO2. Both options are correct. The false choice fallacy is like arguing that either eggs come out of chickens, or chickens come out of eggs. In reality, both are true. Arguing you have to choose one or the other is a false choice. So to recap, the fact is that more CO2 causes warming, and warming causes more CO2. Together, this is a reinforcing feedback. The myth is that CO2 lagged behind temperature in the past, so CO2 can't cause warming. This commits the false choice fallacy, insisting only one option can be true, when in reality both options are true.